mountaineering is actually not a profession yet, uh, not in India and probably not even in the world. Uh, even internationally, mountaineering is a, sp is a sport that very few and only the top mountaineers actually get sponsored and it works as a professional sport. But for most of us, it's a passion. When I climbed Everest in 2009, I had no clue what was going to snowball from there. And when I got into it, um, I've spent all my childhood summers in the mountains. And that's where the, the affliction or the uh, connection to the mountains comes from. I've spent, uh, when I was nine years old, was the first high altitude trek to 4,000, 700 meters, which is Gomuk in, uh, on the Gangotri Glacier. And uh, I think that it became the part of the year that I looked forward to the most. I played from tennis, karate, swimming, badminton, skating, swimming, dancing, sing, uh, singing. It was like the whole plethora of things that I did. Like, once I got back from school at 1, it would be all these things that I did till 8 o'clock and went off to bed by 8.30. And growing up, my mother didn't put this pressure of performing in school or in studies well. I still remember being beaten to pulp in my karate fights. I still remember losing in all my zonals and tennis zonals and skating zonals. Uh, the only other thing that I excelled at was dance. But that did not A, deter me at all because I didn't know to win. My mother never allowed me to feel bad or even know that, oh, if you're doing this sport, you have to win in it. At least as a child, that was not what I was growing up for. She knew that everything that she was putting me through, that she was making me do, was somehow going to add to the character or to the personality that I was going to be. And so when I got into mountaineering, I had no knowledge or interest about how to climb Everest or what happens on Everest. I did my first mountaineering course when I was 16. Actually, just keep going ahead on the pictures. Did that course, uh, I was completely hooked on. Up until then, up until I was 18, I wanted to be a professional dancer. And I was. anything. I knew that. And so once I finished my 12th standard, I had, I didn't want to go to any college. So of course I, I joined my dance institute. But and in these eight years, one of the things that I've realized as a mountaineer is that you have to make it sustainable. You're a management institute, you're all about business. Uh, and to bring something that is not business to a working business model is one of the toughest things that you can do. It works on how you're going to make this profession sustainable. Are you going to become a porter? Are you going to become a guide? Are you going to open a trekking agency? How are you going to make money out of being a mountaineer? Because apparently that's where it all boils down to. But even as a mountaineer, I hope that mountaineering comes to a stage where it is a sustainable sport, where it is like cricket or badminton or kabaddi or soccer today. And it takes a long journey for that to happen. So sports in India in itself is a, a, a difficult area to be in. Whichever sport that you see in India has a story behind it of how it has developed a business model. And that becomes really, really difficult to think about. In mountaineering, we need, Everest was alone 30 lakhs to climb this. 
and I was 19 years old. I went to every FMCG company, everyone. How can I make this sustainable? How can I get a company to pay 30 lakhs or 50 lakhs for an expedition where it has no eyeballs and where, how do I justify 50 lakhs? And that's where I have to be a mountaineer again. It's not, it's no more ab about just getting to the top. It never was really. But now it's all, it's, I have to create an en entire environment to make sure that what I am doing thrives. You can be a snowflake, but it also matters how big a ball you create at the end of it. Because every, each and every one of us is unique. Each and every sport is unique. Like even as mountaineers, we're a very small group of people in India or in the world compared to the rest of the sports. But how we catapult that into something that actually becomes viable and, and can contribute to business, to advertising, to marketing, to actually being in the ecosystem rather than outside it and say, oh, I, I, I want to get there. And so even as a mountaineer, I go through these journeys. Everest is uh, the tallest peak in the world and it was only the second mountain that I climbed. To be very honest, I was not scared at all. Not even for a second. I didn't doubt myself even for a second and it wasn't like I was confident about reaching the summit. I wasn't. That, that's not the point. But it never crossed my mind. That's how focused I was on trying to climb the mountain. And I don't know how and when, but it was always about being able to be on that expedition, being given an opportunity to climb to the highest point. You have to enjoy the journey. The destination is seriously immaterial. I was at the summit, this is my team, and for my entire team, the Everest was their last seventh summit. Seven out of eight of us, four of us reached the summit and two of us were extremely serious medical conditions and had to be lifted out. One of our Sherpas died. Uh, mountaineering is, is also one of the sports that requires all our faculties to be present. When I actually got into it, when I wrote my 10th standard maths paper, I swore I would never do maths in my life again. Like, but when I got into mountaineering, it was one of the first things that I had to do was geometry and maths. And it was so very difficult, especially at high altitude when your brain's not really working. Now I do Sudoku up there just because I have to keep my mind alive. But mountaineering ex expects us to know geography, weather, geology, how today's weather is going to affect the snow that is there in layers at various points and where it could trigger off an avalanche. I didn't even know you could measure such thing when I got into it. We have to know biology, we have to know psychology, we have to know logistical planning in terms of how our rations are divided and taken up the mountain or taken down the mountain. We're supposed to know medical first aid, we're supposed to know uh, weathers, we're supposed to know maps. And it actually ties everything down. From how to cook and to make sure that scientifically your stove is correct. Because at 7,000 meters or 8,000 meters when you're trying to make chai, it takes about an hour or so. Mountaineering is also the thing that sort of allowed me to realize that that I am capable of sticking to the things that I've learned as a child and just be. One of the main things that I am currently doing as a mountaineer is to make sure that mountaineering becomes socially relevant. 
I want everyone to know what we do. Right now, we live in an India where most people think Everest is India, in India. So when we climb, we do something called rotations, which is uh, to acclimatize our body to the height that we're at. We have to make sure that our body knows how to deal with it. So once we reach base camp, we go to camp one. We put our luggage there. We put our rations there. We set up tent. We probably make chai, drink it, and come back down. The next day, we'll go again to camp one. We'll stay the night. We'll go to camp two. We'll open route to camp two, dump our stuff at camp two, put up tent there, stay the night there, come back down, rest for two, three days. Again, there's a lot of planning in terms of which equipment goes where, how it will survive there. If it's food, will it exist by the time you go there? Everest is also considered, like, we always use that phrase. If it's the toughest thing to do in your life, it is always what's your Everest. Or have you still managed to find your Everest? And I think climbing does that in a lot of ways for, at least for me. And that is to allow me to push that boundary no matter what. It is only stepping out of your comfort zone and coming back in if that's necessary, but that allows you to push that circle further and further away. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do and I think will continue to do. Mountaineering is also one of the only reasons that uh, has brought me so close to realizing what we do as a generation. I've seen glaciers melt in my lifetime, which is ridiculously upsetting for me. I was nine when I'd first seen the Gomuk, uh, the Gangotri Glacier, and I was 18 when I saw it next, and it had actually a different level. It was 800 meters further a walk than it used to be. 800 meters is a lot. This was at camp, summit camp, uh, sorry, uh, South Summit, which is 8,500 meters. And I reached that at about 5.30. And the sun was still to come out. It was on my right side, way down. The clouds, the clouds that you see are at 4,000 meters, and I'm at 8,500. So they're literally half the height that I am at. And... On the left, I suddenly saw this shadow. And I mean, this is five minutes into when the shadow first uh, appeared, but the shadow was actually above the horizon on my left. And it was as if I stood in the middle of time because there was one half of the earth that was completely lit up. I mean, the clouds were golden and the light was coming out of it and it was spectacular. It was the Tibetan plateau on my right. And on my left was this massive shadow that, that, that almost covered the rest of the world. I mean, of course, on the sides there was light. but And at that point, I also felt that this is where we've reached as a civilization today. You know, we, technology and internet and connectivity and trade and development and agriculture has brought us to 8,500 meters. We are very, very high right now, extremely high. We can see the summit. We can see our future. We can almost grab it. But what we have climbed on has created a massive shadow on, on half of the world, which we cannot see. And as business entrepreneurs, as just citizens, we all need to think about environment more than anything else in the world. There is this amazing sea of opportunities as to how far we can go all the way to space, but there is somewhere that we need to check ourselves as humans to actually know which direction we want to go because we now stand at a point where we can look in both directions. 
we can look at the amazing possibilities and we can look at what we have destructed and we can change that and it is up to all of us to take that decision to make sure that we do those small things whatever it is if it's not using bottled water not drinking beverages or not using um, a two wheeler or not buying a car all your life whatever small thing that you can do for the environment around you do it because it's very easily too late and finally i think reaching the summit um the most the biggest lesson that i had from reaching the summit was the one th thought that was prevalent in my head once i actually reached the summit was what am i thinking cuz i had no clue what i'm thinking i was completely blank there was not a thought left in my head cuz i had finished them all by the time i reached the reached the summit and so at the summit i kept saying to myself what am i thinking cuz i knew somehow that i had to answer this question all my life what were you thinking when you were right on top of the summit and honestly nothing shunya and it's it's not nothing also it is a feeling of completeness without actually being complete because i had to come back down and it's a tougher journey downwards so how how much ever work you put in to getting to that destination that you need if you haven't enjoyed the way there you probably not know the entirety of it so please enjoy the journeys become the snowflakes that you all want to be and try and gather as much as snow on your way because that's the only way to keep coming down actually <laughs> thank you <laughs>